Thank you everyone for joining us for another episode of Unpacking the Capital. Uh, I'm your state representative, Elmar D. Holly. If you haven't seen, okay, that's what I look like without this on. But as you know, we're still in a pandemic, so I want to keep our uh, guests safe. I am vaccinated. Uh, I, you know, had the booster shot recently and it went very well. Um, and so I'm fully vaccinated, but I, if, if we can be able to keep our neighbors safe, I would like to. Uh, we have uh, the opportunity, the very rare opportunity, with being able to have a conversation with someone who has really been uh, committed to this state's growth for much of his adult life. Uh, you know, not even a, just as an attorney, but also you know, working in the state senate, uh, serving uh, in a state house, and probably one of the most revered positions uh, for all of Georgia, and that is to serve as our governor. And that is my guest, Governor Roy Barnes. Thank well, you so much. Thank you, and thank you, Representative Holly. I've greatly admired you and your work in the General Assembly, thank you. and I commend you for it. And uh, I know you have great things ahead of you. I, I, at least I, I hope to God that I'm able to accomplish it. Um, but I certainly, I've been able to enjoy uh, growing up. Uh, for me, growing up, and I think not only for me, but for so many of us to see, uh, you know, as a, I am a Democrat, and to see that, you know, we've had a very strong leadership um, in our party. And the fact that you've been there uh, to see it, it shift, you know, we've you've seen a shift from back when the party uh, probably en encompassed uh, had many of its members uh, who were, you know, then Democrats and then shifted over to become Republicans, and and then uh, and, and seeing those shifts over the years, you know, for you, uh, what I guess when the general public thinks about, you know, our modern day Republicans and modern day Democrats. And it seems so polarized um, that, you know, there's either party has their own positions. But, you know, something that I saw when I got to the Capitol is uh, how many times on just the bread and butter issues that most of us face in the state, uh, you know, there's that's screen lights up green. There's, yes. a, there's a lot that people really agree on that does not make it to the news at all. Uh, you know, what's, how do you explain that to voters who are trying to connect the dots about uh, how the changes that happen at the state capitol uh, affect them, affect their daily experiences, and oftentimes that affect them um, in ways that are not political in nature at all? Well, I do think that one of the uh, terrible things that has happened in the last few years is what I consider polarized politics. Mm -hmm. um, I, once, I said this in uh, either my first state of, the, uh, state of the State address or in my inaugural address, was that we may be elected as Democrats or Republicans, but we're all Georgians. Mm -hmm. And we have common issues that are Georgians. Uh, as Georgians. You know, some of my best friends were across the aisle. Johnny Isaacson and I served together in our local delegation. We did a lot together. Paul Coverdale mm -hmm. and I served in the Senate together. Uh, when, Carl, Carl, uh, when Paul untimely died from a stroke, uh, I gave the eulogy at his, uh, at his funeral. But there are issues that bind us together. Education, Education, 93% uh, of all the children in Georgia go to a public school. Mm -hmm. And so we have a common uh, goal of improving public education. We have a, a common goal of making sure that you have a higher education system both in the, uh, uh, both in the school, the university system but more importantly in the technical college system, mm -hmm. which I was uh, very interested in when I was governor, we have uh, a common interest uh, in good health care mm -hmm. for those who can't afford it. Right. And uh, those are, which I call the working poor mm -hmm. uh, and that do not have access to health care. 
we have a common interest in making sure that people uh, earn a living wage. We have a common interest in making sure that Georgia prospers and grows. So there are many more things that unite us than divide us. Right. And we should not let a vocal few divide us. We should concentrate on the issues that unite us. Thank you. Well said, sir. Uh, you know, I was, uh, you know, as you were talking, you know, it reminded me about how uh, right now, you know, we have a really great opportunity to do something about uh, our health care system. Yes. You know, we've had uh, in the last 10 years, you've seen it, we've had, you know, 10 rural hospitals closed. Correct. Uh, which means a uh, limited access for people in our rural communities. Um, we're seeing that uh, with hospitals already dealing with uh, coronavirus and, and having to keep that area safe, that, uh, you know, when there's not a, there's a lack of local hospitals, people have to go driving miles. And by the time they get there, they may be, you know, pretty packed to like capacity. I know I've even seen um, uh, the Army, uh, Army Corps of Engineers having to kind of step up and, and be able to, divert traffic because it's so heavy. Well, you know, when we look at, you know, for years we've seen this, uh, we've seen a lot of just even bad messaging or just a lot of negativity uh, floating around uh, the very good virtues of the Affordable Care Act. Uh, I was wondering uh, in what way can Georgia move forward of uh, to secure health care? Well, I don't think that uh, there's any doubt, as you've pointed out, that our rural hospitals are in a crisis. Yeah. Uh, and the rural hospitals are the ones that have suffered the most in the failure to expand Medicaid. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's made it impossible in some rural regions of Georgia to receive even the most basic of health care. One of the things that I think that we need to do is to expand Medicaid. I think that we also need a system statewide of uh, health care coordination. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, we should have ways to transport uh, from rural hospitals to tertiary care hospitals, one that need it quickly and rapidly, mm -hmm. probably through a, a system, as most states have done, of uh, helicopters uh, so that we can, uh, that are affordable so that we can get folks quickly to a tertiary care hospital. The second thing is that Georgia has been very reluctant, or the government has been very reluctant, though the people have accepted it greatly. Uh, of the advantages of AC, uh, the, Amer the American Care Act and uh, Obamacare, as it's right. called, and I, I, I give him full credit, President Obama, full credit for it. Uh, but we should encourage those exchanges, and even if we have to, in addition to what the federal government does, to supplement it, particularly for rural areas, mm -hmm. we should do so. Now in the metro areas, we have, you know, we've got Grady, we have Northside, right. we have Piedmont, mm -hmm. we have Wellstar, we have all of these. Mm -hmm. And I think those of us that live in the metro area take it, take it for granted that that exists everywhere, and it does not. I've traveled this state, mm -hmm. and uh, the issues in uh, health care in rural areas is a real crisis. There is less health care available in rural areas of Georgia than they are in many impoverished nations throughout the world. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a shame and disgrace for uh, a state as prosperous and as great as Georgia. I agree, I agree. I you know I've talked to, uh, locally, I've talked to Dr. Lily Henson, who's a, yes. our executive director at Piedmont Henry Healthcare Center. And, you know, we've been able to focus on uh, the need for uh, people to at least mitigate uh or at least to uh, to find ways to uh to limit uh their ability to necessarily uh require uh seeing a doctor if they if they find themselves uh uh with something that's not so uh threatening a lot of, and many times people just want to have the opportunity to see a doctor 
Yes. And and so it's good to be able to see one, but you know because there's such a lack of of hospitals that can really take people for more serious injuries, uh, and um, and there still is desire for people to be able to see their own primary care physician, you know, with but at the same time we have people who are working long hours. Um, sure. You know, our state still doesn't have a, a real living wage. Uh, you know. At, at, five dollars and 15 cents an hour minimum wage uh which you know it's been like that for the last 30 years and so when i i look at that and think of you know working families who want to be able to go and see a doctor then it really helps them if you, they have kind of focusing as you said on the this tertiary care that there's uh there's other facilities that might be in the area that can see them so that people with very serious injuries may be able to go to uh, their, you know, the hospital where those doctors are right there ready to operate on them. Th that is true. And one of the problems that creates the crisis at the tertiary care hospital is a lack of primary care uh, that exists in large parts of the state. And that is true in some poor areas mm -hmm. of our state, even in the metro area. Uh, I th do think that the state can do uh, some things about that. One is uh, we have a program in Georgia and it needs to be more liberalized that we will uh, educate you. Mm -hmm. uh, right now there's a co-payment, as you might say, or a matching amount. Uh, if you will serve a rural area for at least five years, I think that's the kind of programs we need to promote and expand. Secondly, I think that this pandemic has shown us that the use of technology mm -hmm. uh, and telemedicine is one that we should expand on. But a lot of rural areas do not have the technological capacity uh, to even do the telemedicine. Mm -hmm. And also we need to, again, shore up the rural health care and make sure there's a transportation system that is guaranteed to uh, take the more serious uh, ill, the ones that have more serious illnesses to uh, uh, higher care uh, in the emergency situation, tertiary care. Mm -hmm. Georgia, unfortunately, has not given uh, the attention to health care that it should. One of the things that I put in when I was governor that was that if you receive, and this is something that is evaded too much, mm -hmm. if you receive any kind of tax credit, you have to provide health care for your employees. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'd like to see an audit on that to see how many that actually are providing that because that's a very critical area. Uh, now, if you work, you have some workers' compensation mm -hmm. protection there but not for your family. Right. So, um, you know, there's a lot we could do about health care. I consider health care, I consider the three most pressing issues of the state are education, mm -hmm. the improvement in education, the access to education, the creation of a higher skilled worker so that we can attract more and more business mm -hmm. here. Secondly, uh, health care, and thirdly, the issue of affordable housing. Uh, I think those are the three top issues that we should have. I hear the General Assembly talking about a lot of other issues, you know, and about where you can carry guns and whether an right. abortion and all of this stuff. But the truth of the matter is the bread and butter issues of education, health care, mm -hmm. and uh, skills training is a part of that, and being able to afford to live uh, in a suitable house right. uh, that is commensurate with your wage with your wages. And right. is, it, are the really the most important issues that I see in the mm -hmm. state. No, I, it, it's just the, it's so puzzling. Well, how so much of the conversation, you know, gets taken uh, out of the focus from the daily needs that people have just to sustain themselves and gets put into these little pockets of sensation, whatever's kind of running on Twitter or, you know, whatever's. And I know, and I know that at the same time, you know, technology has granted us access to receive more information, but uh, you know, I, I'm, 
sure you would have probably agreed that it's uh, the the news sources, you know, that we've seen kind of just appear uh, that are uh, so many times unlicensed and, yes. and providing a, a lot of information, but information that may not actually be correct. It, you know, it, it's wonderful to have a telephone, a cell phone in our pocket that you can have access to the internet, you can do any of these things and you can find out almost any information. However, there is a side of that that is very uh, corrupting. Mm -hmm. uh, mis it is also the vehicle for misinformation, fear, and pandering. Yes. And that worries me the most. I will say about uh, the issues uh, that we were just talking about, that mm -hmm. is health care and education and access to affordable housing. Uh, and the issues that get talked about in the General Assembly. Zell Miller, when he was governor, of course he was lieutenant governor for 16 years. I served, uh, he was the only, I served for 16 years in the Senate. I mm -hmm. came with him and left with him. <laughs> and, uh, but he used to have a great story he told. He said, when a couple comes home from work and after they get the kids to bed, mm -hmm there's probably 15 minutes they sit at the kitchen table drinking a cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. And he says, do you think they talk about abortion or do you think they talk about where to carry a gun or all of these other issues? He said, of course not. He said, those issues they talk about in those 15 minutes is where their child is going to get a better education right. and have a better chance in life than they did. Uh, you know, whether what happens if one one of them or the child gets sick mm -hmm. and what happens it, to provide a basic shelter mm -hmm. uh, for folks of quality uh, where they can live. Those are the kind of issues that are talked about in those 15 minutes at the kitchen table. And those should be the kind of issues uh, as elected officials we should be concentrating on rather than the emotional divisive issues right. that we have. Thank you. You know, um, you know, as we are kind of preparing to go back very soon for redistricting, and I know uh, we've seen, I know over 2020, so many people are aware of the census count yes. and the census uh, people coming by. You may remember people coming by, knocking on your door, asking questions about your area to find out where the communities of interest may be. We're going back into session now uh, to, you know, do redistricting, which happens every 10 years. You yourself have, you know, you're, you know, you've sat through three or four of these uh, redistricting efforts. And what is it that for the general public who may not know uh, that this is something that's just not peculiar to Georgia? It happens all across the country. And particularly, you know, if there's a majority party, if, you know, if if uh, if a party has uh, has the command over the House and the Senate, that they are the ones who have the final say, really, about the maps. What what, what is it? Uh, many times, you know, they've had hearings, and uh, and citizens want to be heard on it. It, do citizens themselves, in your opinion, actually have much sway over uh, the elected state representatives or state senators in getting the maps to be fairly drawn? Well, they do. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think they have enough mm -hmm. sway. Mm -hmm. um, now, let me say this in the beginning. Uh, there are no saints in, uh, uh, in reapportionment, only sinners. Democrat and Republican, mm -hmm. I mean, you know. Uh, and over the years, I guess it's because uh, I've become older, uh, but I have become a big believer that you should have a nonpartisan commission that fairly takes those interests in and do not have the political tug of war that exists mm -hmm. uh, in drawing maps. Uh, I think one of the things that's wrong with the Congress is the gerrymandered maps. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> I think that the goal should be to create as many 
balanced, evenly balanced districts throughout the state rather than packing all the Democrats in one place and packing all the Republicans in another. Mm -hmm. I think it would do well to, you know, ameliorate some of that bipolar uh, issues that, we, that divide us mm -hmm. is to have folks that have to, to seek the middle ground. Right. The American people, and Georgia is no different from this, the, the American people do not want extremes on either side. Mm -hmm. They want people that talk about those issues that we were talking about mm -hmm. uh, just earlier. Uh, they want people that will serve their interest in a moderate way. Right. And, and unfortunately, partisan gerrymandering, whether it's on the Democrat or Republican side, does nothing but to further those, that polarization rather than trying to bring in some middle ground that exists. And I think that's very important for the nation. I'm very concerned about our country. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, I'll be 74 years old in March, and I've seen a lot of things that have happened over the years, but I'm very concerned about the future of our nation. I never thought that I would witness uh, an insurrection, yeah. an effort to take over violently the government of the United States, and for it to be accepted. Uh, you know, I always thought that if that was were to happen, that there would be such an upheaval of folks saying that we can never allow this again, uh, that it would permanently uh, disenfranchise mm -hmm. and those that were involved. But that's not been true. And I, I worry about our country. And I think that what has caused that, a lot of the things we've talked about, the disinformation and misinformation on social media, the disbelief in institutions of all uh, of all sorts, and also uh, politicians that are more worried about the next election rather than the next generation. And I think that that is very dangerous for our nation. Thank and you. I hope that's just not a fear born out of age uh, no, and as I'm it's, getting older. I think yeah, it's certainly out of wisdom we've been able to talk about some of the problems, we're going to come back and talk about some solutions.